All right, we're starting off today with a tamer video. Let's just ease into it, folks. We've got bank accounts for sale. Back in September of last year, a criminologist unearthed a video of a multi-billion dollar transnational criminal organization that has been stealing from the U.S. government since the Panini and selling generative artificial intelligence tools to other criminals. The 58-second clip, which was meant for the dark web, opens with a person who goes by Sanchez, covered head to toe in black clothing, and speaking behind a black skeleton mask with someone else who appears to be digging a grave behind him. He said, yes, I sell Chase bank accounts. Yes, I am one of the first people to sell fake bank accounts four years ago. We started with my partner four years ago. Now we are about 30 people in one office. So as Sanchez speaks, the camera shifts from a face-to-face -face point of view with him to one looking up from what appears to be a hole with ominous music in the background. The video was uncovered by David Maiman, a criminologist and professor at Georgia State University who provided context to the video in a LinkedIn post. This was an update to some of his concerned customers who haven't seen him online on the underground market for a couple of weeks, according to the expert. Now, these groups are behind most of the global panini fraud that cost the country billions and are now using generative AI to remain hidden while expanding their criminal empire. However, that is a drop in the bucket to the one trillion or more that these groups can steal from the U.S. government over the next year using AI. Experts use the example of somebody submitting a dozen unemployment applications with stolen identities during the panini. So in reality, those who commit government fraud and get caught are the tip of the iceberg. There's a whole machine behind them that at this point closely resembles the 20th century Italian mob or modern day drug cartels. On the dark web, there is a fraud as a service industry run by international cyber gangs from all around the world, including Russia, Nigeria, and China, among dozens of others. The one depicted in the video is called Mega Darknet Market, which experts said is one of the biggest enterprises in the world. This video gave the first glimpse into how these organizations sell mule accounts, which is a bank account set up with a stolen identity, as well as generative AI and deepfake tools to other criminals. Now, these international enterprises are arming other criminals across the globe with AI tech and tools to execute sextortion scams, which generally target young folks, young adults, and have led to the end of lives. The U.S. government is the primary target, though, and AI power technology allows them to rob government agencies and go poof. So, innocent video, whole lot of backstory, big iceberg. We only know so much. Alrighty, if this next video is truly real, it's gonna hurt my soul. It's from user UFOs on Tiamat originally, but I can't seem to find the original upload anymore. It starts off with a young looking girl sleeping on the floor of a dingy room. Now there's a wooden table and a bunch of unidentifiable clutter. Apparently the camera being used was recording her for about 13 hours at that time, which was terrifying to think about. Suddenly, what appears to be a box either falls off a bookshelf or is thrown in via an unknown opening in the corner of the room and startles our sleeping victim. From what we know, the girl has barricaded herself in the room with the debris that we see and it changes frames and the poor thing is now eating from what we believe is a limited stock of food. Eventually, she realizes that there is indeed a camera filming her and huddles in the middle of the room. She makes a sign on white paper that she holds up to the camera and it says that she has run out of water and is pleading with anybody who is watching for help. She mentions that she has been locked up in her current location for around five days and she doesn't know where she is. Afterwards, we see her return to her pile of blankets in the middle of the room and clutch a pink blanket for comfort. The poor girl is so disheveled, which has led internet sleuths to ponder if this footage is from one of the much rumored red rooms that are supposedly plenty on the dark web. Now, these rooms have gained a lot of attention and infamy, with many rumors and myths circulating about their existence and operation. While some folks believe that red rooms are nothing more than urban legends, a lot of other people claim to have witnessed them firsthand. So this might have been from that. As a matter of fact, on Reddit, 4chan, Hidden Wiki, which is kind of a cliff notes for dark web beginners, you can find people trading second, third, fourth hand accounts of red rooms that have opened and closed over the years. The concept of red rooms, by the way, first appeared on the dark web sometime in the early 2010s, and their name derives from the color of the room where the supposed acts take place. Now this room isn't red, but make it that what you will. The term red room gained popularity uh, specifically after a Japanese animation featured a pop-up ad asking, do you like the red room? If users attempted to close the ad, a full-sized window would open with the names of individuals who had supposedly accessed the red room before and were found dead. The idea is that viewers pay to watch a live stream of a person being tormented and eventually killed. And they can even interact with the tormentor and other viewers through chat or messaging functions. So sadly, the video that we have today ended with somebody knocking down the girl's barricade and getting inside the room. So I shudder to think of what we didn't see. Alrighty, time to move on to a plague doctor. This black and white video comes in at about two minutes in length and features somebody dressed as, well, a plague doctor. The outfit was designed to keep airborne illnesses from infecting those treating victims with various diseases and includes a long 
long, dark, beak-like mask with a black shroud that covers the wearer's entire body. In this video, a person wearing what appears to be the costume is recorded walking around an abandoned building in the middle of a forest, revealed in the background through shattered windows. Now, on its own, that video wouldn't be scary enough to make today's list. Heck, it wouldn't even be scary enough to make any of my lists. It would just be something I send people on TikTok to laugh. But just wait for it, wait for it, it's gonna get weirder. Playing throughout the video are shrill, buzzing noises. The person carries around an irregularly blinking light, which they occasionally hold up to the camera. It was sent to gadidzz.com, a Swedish tech blog back in 2015, and the website immediately made it public. Embedded within the video are several common ciphers and encryption systems. Some lead to images of tormented and mutilated people. Most were decoded by users following the video via a Reddit thread. Now, the detectives were able to create a rather lengthy link to the investigations of the Boston eh, eh, rope necklacer. The messages have also been interpreted as an implied threat of bio bad acts against the US. Look folks, there's words I can't say. Three months after the initial controversy, a man by the name of Parker Warner Wright stepped forward and claimed to have created and sent the video. He said a sequel was in the works and challenged anyone to try replicating the segment. Yet, no thank you. After the last couple of years, I think the last thing anybody wants to see more of are plague doctors, any mention of a plague, torment. I know of independent haunted attractions that lost so much money by having to retheme all of their plague areas post Panini, and I don't want to see them hurt anymore. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. Here's a doozy for you to ponder over. Not a haunted doll, but a demonic android. A spooky animatronic mannequin known as Tara the Android can be seen in this video. Its arms jerking and head turning from side to side, while the lyric, I feel fantastic, repeats over a uh, synth line. It was uploaded to YouTube by the user Creepyblog, who hasn't uploaded any other clips as of the time of me saying this. Really, not much happens in the video besides the repeated phrase and the robotic movement of Tara's arms and head, but where the clip gets freaky is two brief moments nestled between Tara's performance. First, viewers are given a brief view of the outdoors, what looks like the edge of a forest, or possibly somebody's backyard. The camera zooms in on a pile of sticks, leaves, and dirt. Second are the phrases positioned in some of Tara's song, Please Leave, followed by the repetition of Run, 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 Run. These two strange instances in the video led some viewers to suspect the video's creator of killing. They go by the name of John Bergeron, and rumors believe they committed the crime in the outdoor view of the video, and that the various clips of Tara show the robot wearing the victim's clothes. Possible support for this claim is the description included in the initial post, which made a subtle nod to the Greek story of Pygmalion, an ancient sculptor from Cyprus who thought all women were unworthy of love. In the myth, Pygmalion creates an ideal woman from ivory and falls in love with her, and the goddess Aphrodite then brings the statue to life. Viewers are torn. Some say the video offers clues to the real Tara's fate. Perhaps Perhaps she didn't live up to Bergeron's expectations of an ideal woman, so he killed her. Or maybe he was so riddled by guilt for the crime, he created the video, subconsciously hoping to be caught. No matter the like, quote unquote, real reason behind the video, it creeps me the heck out and I'm not a fan. Alrighty folks, I'm ending today with the first thing that popped into my mind when I think of dark web videos that have made it off the dark web, blank room soup. At first glance, it seems relatively tame. There's a man sitting at a table with his eyes blacked out and he's just eating soup, right? I guess. A person in a character costume comes up behind him and begins patting him on the back, but as this happens, the man eating begins to sob. Then a second person dressed in the same getup enters the frame and appears to be trying to comfort the now crying man. So when this was first uploaded, I think it was in 2008, it was taken as a joke. It was a prank or some weird strange experiment. It's been quite a bit of time since this was first appearing on the web, and to my knowledge, nobody stepped forth to claim it, which has led some to believe that there may be a more sinister story behind the video than what was initially thought. The video was first sent to Raymond Percy. The characters were his creation, used in a show he did at the Sunset Club. The costumes were stolen from his car in the parking lot, and a bit later he received the video. According to him, the characters called Ray Ray move exactly like Percy's characters are meant to, meaning that people wearing the outfits must have studied the performances meticulously. So there's been some ideas thrown around. One claims the meat in the soup is actually human remains, which the man is being forced to eat. Another says that the man is about to die, which is why he's crying. And the latter seems to be the more popular, but the video ultimately remains a source of curiosity curiosity and bafflement. Yeah, I don't want to watch it ever again. No thanks. I'm good. Number five on this list is the reversed demon. This demon clearly took some gymnastic classes when they were alive as a person because they're definitely flexing their flexibility muscles now in the demon afterlife. The clips that I'm about to show you were posted to the YouTube channel Kisa Weba. They were captured by a security camera and show a demon slowly crawling across the ground.
So as we can see, that demon is just slowly meandering along, minding its own business. Now, you may think that this is the end of the story, but it's actually not, because that thing was caught on another security camera in the area a little bit later. Let's take a look at that. Now what on God's green earth is that freaking thing? I mean, it has to be a demon, right? Like, what the hell? Its face is clearly all white, completely inhuman. And now that we can fully see the way that it walks, we get a clear sense of how demonic it actually is. I think the biggest question that comes up through all of this, though, is what is it doing and where's it going? Fingers crossed that whatever it was doing doesn't concern any one of us. Number four on this list is Kubishev Square. Back in 2015, a video was uploaded to YouTube from an account named Demon Operator. The video is only 50 seconds long and shows someone getting chased by a demon or monster in Kubishev Square. Let's roll 30 seconds of that clip and see what you guys think about this demon. So the man gets into the park and just to the left of him is this completely demonic looking spider creature. It's slow out of the gate, but then it starts coming after him. The final 10 seconds of the video is going to show this thing get really close to him and then spit what looks to be some green toxic fluid out at him. Let's roll that now. <laughs> so, yeah, let's put it this way. Whatever this thing was, it definitely isn't human or any sort of animal that we're aware of. Now, can I say for sure that it's a demon? No, I can't, but I can say that it definitely looks very dangerous. Watch your back, everybody. This thing came after this dude in broad daylight in the park. Number three on this list is the scariest video that you'll ever watch. That's actually what the YouTubers Mindseed TV titled this video that they posted roughly about a year ago. In this video, several guys are on a ghost hunt late at night in a haunted home. The whole video is roughly 40 minutes long and they capture a ton of cool stuff. One of the scariest parts of this entire video though is what I'm about to show Did you guys see it? It was pretty fast, so I understand if you didn't. From behind the bushes of this man's home, there was a creature that looked very far from being human. Let's get a closer look at this thing, and you guys feel free to comment down below what the heck you think this thing is. 
So seriously, what the heck is that? It almost looks like it has some underwater qualities, but like, obviously that doesn't make any sense at all. I personally think this is a demon of some kind, but what it wants with this man and where it came from, these are all questions that we may not be getting answers to anytime soon. And finally, number one on this list is the hallway demon. This next video was posted back at the end of 2020 and shows somebody getting into a very close encounter with what looks to be a dangerous demon. Yeah, so if that's me, I am getting the hell out of there, folks. I don't care what I think I know about demons or how many freaking boxing classes I've taken in the past, I am not sticking around to see how I'd fare against something like that. Also, let's face it though, the person filming was going through a totally abandoned building that had rumors of a haunting. They pretty much knew what they were getting into with this one. Still though, very scary nonetheless. Number five, the Max Headroom Incident. A personal favorite, easily my favorite unexplained mystery in history, it's a small one, but it's my favorite, is the Max Headroom Incident. Max Headroom was the name of a character played by Matt Frewer, a British comedian portraying an artificially generated anchorman in a dystopian world 20 minutes into the future. They were actually way ahead of their time with AI business on Max Headroom. The character was known for his strange, jilted speech, chaotic, 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 chaotic editing style, and a comedy in a way that was just a tiny, teeny bit scary. All of that meant that Max was the perfect avatar for a signal hijacking pirate to use for the funniest unexplained mystery ever put to air. WGN-TV was a local TV station in Chicago, Illinois. During a local news bulletin on November 22nd, 1987, viewers were interrupted watching the news to a 20 second clip of a man in a Max Headroom costume dancing erratically in front of a sheet metal screen. The incident scared the staff, but not half as much as Max's second interruption. Later that same evening, the hacker would strike again, this time during an episode of Doctor Who. Bloy me. This time Max's invasion came complete with audio, which was a low, scary drone accompanied by Max blurting out complete non sequiturs. Catch the wave, there's still an X there, there's really something about it. Even though the clip is silly, it's a joke, the buzz of the signal combined with Max's uncanny, terrifying appearance in the mask and nonsensical sayings are really creepy like an auxiliary nightmare. I just made a masterpiece for all the world's greatest newspaper nerds is a particularly good line out of his rant, admits quoting a few ad campaigns, television shows, songs, and general absurdities. The reason I I love the Max Headroom incident so much is that the hackers had this golden opportunity. You know, they hijacked a TV station, they had everyone in Chicago watching, and they had absolutely no message, no meaning, no greater goal. They were just doing it for kicks. They were trolling before trolling was even a thing. The clip ends with Max being spanked by a woman in a maid outfit while he yells, they're coming to get me. Flawless, no notes. So who was this Max Headroom imposter? Who hijacked the station? That's the thing, we don't know and we never will. He covered his tracks well, he got away with it. The only person who knows who was under that mask was the man wearing it. As such, he remains the most famous and most legendary signal intrusion. Catch the wave. And if you're looking for more scary videos that might have Max Headroom and might not, we've got all of that and then some on top five scary. The odds are very good if it's freaky, we We've done a video or two or three on it. So hit subscribe, please make sure to hit that little bell so you don't miss a scream, but do that at the end of this video, okay? Cause I got way more scary, unexplained videos coming up for you right now. Number four, the Serbian dancing woman. If you've been scrolling through TikTok lately, there's a very good chance you've seen word or you've heard of the Serbian dancing woman. While the mystery is purported to have started all the way back in the 90s, it only came to light recently when it was posted to TikTok. Now, the exact details and all of this are a bit wrapped in mystery, but that's what makes it so darn interesting. It's a list of top five mysterious videos after all. 
There are videos all over the app and the rest of the net and they all feature a mysterious unidentified Serbian woman dancing in the pale moonlight who by all accounts you do not want to interrupt lest you face grave consequences. Who is she? Where did she come from? Why is she dancing in the street? What is she listening to? Which is very important. Does she just have rhythm in her heart or is it something darker? Now there are more than a few stories of TikTok users who've claimed that they have encountered the dancing woman up close and we'll share a story or two and I'll let you decide if they're just tall tales or true stories. A TikToker going by the name of Nico was walking with his mother when they saw the lady dancing in the street. She charged at the two of them claiming herself to be the ambassador of death and claimed that she needed Nico's mother's life for a ritual to resurrect an old Serbian king. Now another TikToker by the name of Solomon who says he was friends with Nico reports that after Nico saw the dancing lady he got a little jealous and wanted to find her too and after weeks of searching found her introduced himself and she screamed that she was going to take his soul. Of course it's important to remember anyone on TikTok or the internet can go on and just say anything but really would someone on the internet really look into a camera and just tell lies? I don't I don't think people would do that. Number three, blank room soup. I have seen a lot of odd videos in my time. It's literally my job to watch odd videos but every now and again I come across something that sticks with me and leaves an awful taste in my mouth. Huh. Well there's nothing quite like the taste of blank room soup. This next very strange video, often referred to as blank room soup or some variation thereof, depicts someone who seems to be being held hostage by giant pop vinyls, strange men in mascot costumes. Now the actual content of Blank Room Soup is pretty bare. One man is being held by the mascot slurping down what looks like a, a bowl of ramen or pho and it's pretty hard to make out if he's laughing, crying, screaming or some horrible combination of all three. He's had his eyes blacked out and censored so it's pretty hard to tell what's going on. Legend has it that this video came from the dark web and was found there. But with a little digging we can try and find some of its actual history. Now there are tons of wild theories ranging from strange capture and interrogation, satanic rituals and cults or bizarre esoteric performance art. Getting to the bottom of this video is a tough one. Amateur sleuths traced the costumes back to an artist named Raymond Percy who created the characters for performance art but this video didn't come from Percy who reported that the outfits he had made were stolen from his van, meaning the people in this video could have been who stole his costumes. So what do you think? Is this bizarre video footage of a dark deep web crime or is it just an incredibly bizarre auteur art piece we couldn't hope to understand? I know if I was an esoteric artist I would definitely lie and say that someone stole my costumes and not that I did it. Regardless of its original intention the video is deeply disturbing and there's something about it that just makes me feel sticky and makes me want to sit down in the shower. It's going to be puzzling us for as long as we have to think about it, which honestly I hope is not much longer. I, I hope I'm done. Oh yeah, I am. Number two, happy anniversary. Up next is going to be the sincerely disturbing clip referred to as happy anniversary. If only it was as nice as that title implied. In 2004, a woman by the name of Maura Murray went missing under bizarre circumstances. She'd emailed her boss telling them that she'd be out of work for a death in the family and then left on a road trip. But there was no death in the family and after a car crash she was never seen again. Now the case as a whole is fascinating and if you're interested in true crime there's enough fodder for a full video out there and better YouTubers than me have done stories on it so look up Maura Murray after. But why am I telling you all this? Well because this video was posted eight years to the day of Mora's disappearance titled Happy Anniversary and the account was owned by a user named Mr. 112 Dirtbag and Mora went missing on Route 112. More than a bit of a coincidence there. Now the video in question is deeply unsettling even without that context. It's just an old man cackling to himself maniacally, winking to the camera and spouting words out in a foreign language. Now allegedly this video was sent to the Murray family by the upload. Police looked at it and deemed it inconsequential to the investigation. This dismissal led some internet sleuths to start start theorizing that this was just a deeply profoundly mentally unwell man who had become obsessed with the case and was trying to involve himself in any way he could as a 
fan of sorts. Now, the original video and the original Mr. 112 Dirtbag channel were both taken down off of YouTube, although they've since been mirrored. The trail goes cold there. Maura Murray was tragically never found. Was this video a part of the puzzle? Was it just a lone man rambling into his camera seeking the attention of a grieving family? Not that that's any better. The video is still incredibly creepy regardless of how you look at it. A number one dining room in and out. I don't think I meant to put this at the number one, but it is what it is. Coming in next on our list of strange, inexplicable videos that have been baffling internet viewers for years and years is this bizarre little clip titled Dining Room In and Out. Now the clip is very short, showing the world's worst dining party. A meal is set out, but only one guest has arrived to eat it. A pale-faced woman caked in makeup, making her look inhuman or like that girl in the radiator out of a racer head for all my lynch heads out there. She mumbles something incoherent as the camera pulls back on her and she falls face first into a bowl. The scene flips back on itself. The doll-like woman looks up and says, there is nothing. Eerie, short, sticks with you. I'm gonna be thinking about it the rest of my life. What is the purpose of this video and where did it come from? Who made it and why? Well, unlike a lot of the stranger videos out there and the ones on this list, there is actually a lot of answers on this and I will spoil it just a little bit. The Dining Room was a short experimental film directed by independent director David B. Earle who was taking large swaths of inspiration from David Lynch for his work. If you're not already a fan, Lynch is famous for depicting nightmarish scenes of suburban life, bringing unsettling terror to fairly mundane things. A small logging town, a diner, a radiator, the planet Arrakis, you know. The Dining Room short was intended as a nihilistic commentary on the afterlife, or lack thereof. The intention was for this clip to repeat endlessly, with the only dialogue being the doll saying, there is nothing in reference to the lack of an afterlife. All there is is life and death and top five scary videos. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And we're starting off at number five with Greylock. This is a web series that started on YouTube just about eight months back at the time of recording this video, but it's gotten a fair amount of buzz online. The series is a collection of surreal and disturbing short videos made to look as if they were shot on VHS. You slowly watch as the story unfolds piecing together the mystery as to what the hell these videos even are. For a lot of folks, analog horror was getting a little repetitive over the years, but this seems to have breathed a new life into the genre. It's just a really well done series. Great voice acting, genuinely unsettling imagery. It's like watching a nightmare play out on screen, and it's got a lot of fans excited about the genre again. The series is still just getting started, really, so we haven't seen exactly where everything is going yet. It's still very mysterious, but that's a big part of what makes analog horror so scary. It's that fear of the unknown mixed with imagery that is sometimes oddly familiar. One of the most unsettling videos on the channel, and probably one that the series is most well known for, is entitled Tape 06 Sleeping Dogs. The majority of the video is presented as a series of voice messages made by a man named Paul, a construction worker who's come across a mysterious tunnel while on a job. He describes the tunnel as seeming to look man-made. As the messages continue though, Paul is audibly becoming more and more distressed. Strange and disturbing things are starting to happen to him and his crew. And what's great about how the story is told is that we don't see what Paul is talking about. We just hear his voice through these voice messages. It's a perfect example of how sometimes the best way to approach horror is by allowing the audience to picture the horror in their own imaginations. We do get a disturbing visual along with the audio though, a lo-fi graphic featuring an image of Paul with a date and time next to his face all on a blue backdrop. It almost looks like something you'd see on the news except heavily distorted. Another incredibly creepy touch is that as Paul's phone message messages become more and more disturbing. His photo starts distorting, you know, starting off with a smile at the start of the video and then morphing into a demented frown towards the end. 
And at number four, we have Skinamarink. This is a good example uh, to me of the analog horror genre seeping its way into full length movies. It's not analog horror in the classical sense, but it has some staples of the genre. So the low quality grainy image, the fact that you don't have visible actors on screen, it's presented in an almost found footage POV style, even though that's not technically what it is. This movie is very hard to explain. It kind of just needs to be experienced. Now fear is very subjective and this movie is not gonna be for everybody. Some people really hated it, others found it to be one of the most terrifying movies they'd ever seen. I could talk about Skin of Rink to death and I wanna avoid overhyping it, but I'll just say this. I haven't been this scared watching a movie since I was a kid. The plot is very simple. Two siblings wake up to find that their parents are gone and every window and door in their house has vanished but they may not be completely alone in the house. The film is presented almost entirely of still shots of dark hallways and rooms with just the sounds of the two siblings whispering to each other, trying to figure out what's going on. You know when you first turn off the lights in your room to go to bed, and you're laying in pitch blackness, only you see this, this graininess in your vision. It looks almost like minuscule little shapes dancing in the black. While the low quality image in this movie combined with the dim lighting in almost every shot really mimics that perfectly. And it reminded me of that feeling you have as a kid lying awake well into the night, staring into the darkness of your room, watching that graininess dancing in your vision, convinced that there's something there with you lurking in the corner of your room. I found myself transfixed by this movie. I describe it as almost hypnotic. And yes, there are some long, boring stretches, but honestly, that's part of what makes this movie so effective. It lulls you into this almost dreamlike state so that when something unsettling happens, it hits even harder. Make sure to watch this movie in the right setting though. Uh, me and some buddies watched it, just all the lights off, projected it onto his wall. Um, watching on your laptop in the middle of the afternoon, like distracted with other stuff going on, uh, it's just not gonna have the same effect. Next on the list, we have Thalassin. This video was published to YouTube by the channel Gooseworks. It's the first video in, in a, a very short three video series called The Blue Channel. The video is presented as an old infomercial for a medication called Thalassin. It uses late 80s to mid 90s kind of lo-fi graphics that you would have seen on cable TV back in the day. Again, very much playing into the familiar yet distorted and surreal vibe that's at the core of analog horror. In the video, Thalassin is just in the video, Thalassin is described as a medication used to treat a made-up condition called AED, or Advanced Emotional Deterioration, with Thalassin increasing the potency of one's emotions. The graphics feel so true to the time they're kind of parodying that if you didn't know any better, you'd probably think this was a genuine pharmaceutical ad from like 1988. As the video goes on though, it descends into something nightmarish. The narrator starts listing off a series of emotions that the medication can uh, help people with, accompanied by drawings of these emotions on a man's face. It starts off pretty standard, you know, happiness, sadness, anger, relief. But then it changes on a dime. The narrator asks the audience, are you tired of only experiencing natural emotions? The ad then becomes about Thousand Plus, which allows for an extended palette of emotions, which the narrator starts lift which the narrator starts listing off still accompanied by the drawings of the man's face only now it takes on a horrifically distorted Form. The video, only now, it starts taking on horrifically distorted forms. The video borders on humor, too, because the made-up names of these emotions like humber and degrance and dorselessness are just funny. And then with all these insane images of the dude's face, it's disturbing and uncomfortable, but comedically well-timed and just so surreal. Makes me laugh out loud as well. In at number two, we have the Mandela Catalog. This is an analog horror web series created by YouTubers. Alex Kister. It's become one of the staples of the genre. The series is set in Mandela County, Wisconsin. The series is set in Mandela County, Wisconsin during the early 90s and late 2000s. 
The storyline revolves around these shape-shifting creatures called alternates, led by a figure resembling the Archangel Gabriel. These nearly immortal beings aim to wipe out humanity, taking the identity of citizens by psychologically tormenting them into a state where they end up taking their own lives, referred to in the series as Metaphysical Awareness Disorder, or MAD. The alternates use televisions, computers, vehicle GPS systems to manipulate and control people, which is what we're basically watching. The series incorporates biblical references too, suggesting that the alternates are in fact biblical demons, and that Gabriel is a deceptive representation of Satan. The plot subtly explores biblical stories like Noah's Ark, Adam and Eve, and the birth of Jesus, of course presented in a disjointed, surreal kind of way. But the combination of these ancient themes with modern technology, or modern for 90s and 2000s anyway, uh, it's different. It's a blend of the supernatural and the contemporary. The characters in the series grapple with the impl the characters in the series grapple with the implications of the alternate's existence and their destructive intentions. The psychological toll on the residents of Mandela County is a central theme. They're not just facing the external threats, but also they're battling internal struggles because of the relentless torment inflicted by the entities. Finally though, I couldn't make an analog horror video without talking about The Backrooms. The Backrooms has kind of become its own offshoot of the analog horror genre, almost forming a genre in itself, and I think it's kind of been butchered now with people adding all this lore behind it and just expanding too much on it. It just kind of kills the mystery, making it less scary. But initially, this concept was really cool, and the videos by Kane Pixels were fantastic. There have been some other solid ones since his work, but also a lot of unoriginal duds. The Backroom's internet phenomenon all started out with one single image posted to 4chan. The image was accompanied with the caption. If you're not careful and you no clip out of reality in the wrong areas, you'll end up in the back rooms where it's nothing but the stink of old moist carpet, the madness of mono yellow, the endless background noise of fluorescent lights at maximum hum buzz, and approximately 600 million square miles of randomly segmented empty rooms to be trapped in. God save you if you hear something wandering around nearby because it sure as hell has heard you. So this really sparked a lot of people's imaginations. That piece of text, that piece of text just added this layer of dread and mystery to what looked to be simply a boring, empty office space. Looking at the image further though, there really is something unnerving about it. It's familiar, but drab and ominous. The Backrooms really took off when The Backrooms found footage was uploaded to YouTube by Kane Parsons, aka Kane Pixels. This added a found footage analog horror element to the fear of liminal spaces. This added a found footage analog horror element to the fear of liminal spaces that The Backrooms also heavily represents. It's a fantastic video and really looks like a large empty office space shot in the real world, but it's completely digital. We watch as a young guy filming with a VHS camera is suddenly transported to the back rooms where he walks through the seemingly endless maze of empty rooms before being pursued by a terrifying entity. Kane Parsons has described the back rooms as a poorly remembered recollection as the Kane Parsons has described the back rooms as a poorly remembered recollection of the late 90s and early 2000s. And that is definitely a major aspect of not just the back rooms but the analog horror genre as a whole. It's images of low quality television commercials tucked away in the back of our childhood brains but distorted into something nightmarish. And I just think that that's really fascinating. In fifth place we have high school Ryan Draper and Tori Adamchik were students at Pocatello High School in Idaho that were interested in films and decided to try to record their own. It starts off innocent enough with a frame showing a crowded high school hallway before cutting to the night of September 22nd. I believe we have the video so you can see the transition for yourself right now. The two boys are in a car and you can overhear Brian saying, we're here in this car. <laughs> the time is 9.50, September 22nd, 2006. Um, unfortunately, we have the grueling task of killing our two friends and they are right in that house just down the street. 
date. Tori goes on to explain that they had already been hanging out with the soon to be victim that evening. Cassie Jo Stodart, while well, she was, you know, house sitting for her aunt and uncle on Whispering Cliffs Drive in Northeast Bannock County. Her boyfriend Matt Beckham had also been in attendance for the hangout, but went home before the unfortunate events. Cassie had given the friends a tour of the house, including the basement. She was house sitting for her aunt and uncle. The four teens went into the living room to watch a movie, but the would be criminals left before the film ended, claiming they wanted to watch a movie at the local movie theater instead. She was unaware that before the boys left, Brian had unlocked the basement door so that he and Tori could re enter the house undetected. Sometime after leaving the house on Whispering Cliffs, the duo returned to the neighborhood, parked down the street, got out of their car, and put on costumes consisting of dark clothing, gloves, and white painted masks. The boys entered the house through the basement door that had been left unlocked, while the couple that was left there were watching television in the living room, as planned, intentionally making loud noises when they got downstairs in an unsuccessful attempt to lure the couple down there. When that didn't work, they found the circuit breaker and turned off the power in the house, hoping, you know, one or two of them would come down to check the breaker, but that didn't work either, and they were freaking out upstairs. At approximately 10.30 p.m., Matt's mother picked him up, leaving Cassie at the house alone. He called Tori's cell phone to see where he and Brian were, and could barely hear him since he was whispering, so Matt assumed the boys were at the movie theater, as planned. Eventually, the boys went upstairs, armed with, um, stabby implements, and attacked and ended the life of Cassie. Afterwards, they filmed their conversation. Why not? With Brian clearly stating that they just killed Cassie, just left her house, and that it wasn't a bleeping joke. He further elaborated on how he impaled her in the throat and saw her lifeless body. A lot of which I, uh, I, nope, can't say that here. The footage in total is over half an hour, and it made me sick to my stomach to watch. Both boys were arrested on September 27th, 2006, and eventually received sentences of life imprisonment without parole. Good riddance. In fourth place, we have the elusive white lady of Union Graveyard. Located in Connecticut, Lorraine Warren, one of our favorite people, used to often take walks through the cemetery in question, saying that it was one of the most haunted places around. Now her husband, Ed, caught the white lady on camera on September 1st of 1990 at 2.40 a.m. during his seventh night in a row of filming at the cemetery. Determined to have footage as proof, and uh, we can show some of that footage to you now. He described dark figures surrounding her, shapes that he described as wood ghosts that seemed to jump on her while they all argued. Who is this mysterious lady? Because I love a good spooky lady. It's believed she is Harriet Seeley, whose young son passed shortly after being born, and Harriet herself passing soon after. Legend believes she may have died in hopes of finding her son, and still wanders her final resting place searching a out. She's described as a young woman wearing a white dress with dark hair. Many who have witnessed her believe they have almost hit her with their vehicle, only to find no trace of her once they pull over. Others claim they have often seen her hovering slightly above the ground around the cemetery, going back and forth amongst different gravestones. In 1993, local firefighter Glenn Powell received a call about a transformer explosion and drove to the scene of the incident with a police officer and observed a female driver following closely behind him on the road. He remembers the night sky had turned pink, and the explosion emitted large amounts of electricity that made the hair in his arm stand up at a close distance. Glenn was driving along the road beside the cemetery when the officer seated next to him yelled, watch out! In the middle of the road was a woman with long brown flowing hair and wearing a white Victorian nightgown. Glenn described seeing a surprised look on her face before slamming on the brakes, but was unable to avoid hitting her, describing it like hitting a brick wall with the back of his truck flying into the air and the policeman next to him being launched into the dashboard. The driver behind him jumped out of the car and helped the two men search the area of the crash to check on the woman, but she was gone. Glenn is quoted as saying there was no red fluid, there was no clothing, there was no body, there was nothing. The footage of the white lady was considered lost for many years, never making its way to the internet until after the passing of the Warrens, when their son-in-law Tony found the tape in a lost corner and uploaded it here to the interwebs. Glad we've got it. In third place, we have lake monster footage. In June of 2009, a cell phone video of a creature swimming in Lake Champlain near Oakledge Park in Burlington caught some attention. The nearly two minute long video, taken by Burlington resident Eric Olson, shows a creature moving across the mouth of the small cove and beach area at the park. At several points during the video, the whatever it is, appears to raise its head about a foot or more above the water's surface. Other times, you know, a portion of what appears to be a torso, several feet in length, can also be seen. Eric has been adamant in saying that he was simply filming the water when he noticed the cryptid and tried to zoom in on it. He says that anyone watching it can see that whatever it was, was moving both horizontally across the water and vertically, going under the surface and coming back up. He described it as looking very long, but not very wide. Now, Lauren Coleman is a cryptozoologist based in Portland, Maine, and said what Olson filmed with his phone is the best evidence to date of what residents on both sides of Lake Champlain prefer to call champ. He stated that the video should be forensically analyzed and broken down frame by frame by an expert. Before that day, the best known champ evidence was a photo taken in 1977 by Sandra Mancy of Bristol while she was having a picnic on the lake with her family. The photo was verified as legitimate and later appeared in Time Magazine and the New York Times. I'm sorry, who was gonna tell me there's oodles of evidence of a sea monster here in Canada? Yikes. 
In second place, we have stalker footage. Parasocial relationships are the incredibly terrifying, one-sided bond a fan or follower think they have with a public figure, and sadly can lead to scary stories. I'm speaking from experience, and this is one point I won't be elaborating on. Icelandic pop star Björk learned this, sadly, when an American fan sent her an explosive device in disguise and then, you know, offed himself, leaving behind 22 hours of videotape. Ricardo Lopez was described by his peers as extremely bright, but dropped out of high school to become an artist. As well as the videotape, he left behind an 803 page handwritten diary full of the musings of, you know, someone embarrassed by his body and awkward around girls. Okay, but same, but I'm not a killer. Ricardo escaped his life by reading about the glamorous world of celebrities, fixating on Bjork as his muse that he created art around. But soon the fan love entered the gray area of obsession. And that's the danger zone of being a fan. He recorded himself talking to the camera, saying that being in love, having an infatuation is a euphoric feeling, and he was very happy. He had something to look forward to every day. The diary shows how the fantasy eventually turned, you know, more and more consuming, and how Ricardo slowly became less and less angry in reality. Three years into his obsession, he read that Bjork had a lover, and he wrote in his diary about his sadistic plans to inflict pain onto her. Ricardo constructed an explosive device using sulfuric acid and placed it inside a hollowed out book, also forging a letter from her record company telling her the book was for a future project. We actually have footage of him building that device, and I'll let that play now. He managed to acquire the address for her London home and mailed the package off, in hopes that she would open it and it would explode right in her face. Ricardo went home, still saving the drama after he mailed it off. One tape showed him saying to the camera, it went off almost without a hitch. I'm shaking more and more, but I was real cool in there. Just a little bit nervous. With this device now almost at Bjork's doorstep, Lopez began the final act for his tape, taking his life. In his video, Ricardo said he knew many killers had families that were brutal, but said his own family was normal and kind, and he played Bjork's music in the background. His last words were, this is for you before pulling the trigger. On the video, a kaboom noise rang out, but there was no visible fluids. Ricardo just groaned and fell out of frame. Police found his body four days after the incident and were able to stop the package one day before it caused the intended harm. On September 16th of 1996, police found the camera and a videotape labeled The Last Day. Several other cassettes were also nearby. And uh, personally, this is the scariest video for me today. I've watched enough Criminal Minds to know premeditated killings are a thing, but this is a whole other level of terrifying. Oh, people. In first place, we have the Paris Catacombs. For those who do not know, the catacombs are a series of underground tunnels that are located underneath Paris that were created during the late 18th century to help alleviate the city's cemetery shortage crises. Fun fact, there are approximately 6 million bodies buried in the catacombs alone. Which, eh, you're the one, that's a lot of ghosties. In recent times, however, the catacombs have become a popular place for urban explorers, who have dubbed themselves cataphiles. One significant example of this is a man who took some footage of the catacombs of Paris sometime in the early 1990s. I'll kick this off with a snippet now before I describe it. The footage, which was shot on a black and white video recorder, starts as rather unremarkable, with the man exploring around the catacombs. And hey, he even picks up a few bones along the way. Wouldn't recommend it, but he did. As the video goes on, however, the man begins to walk at a faster pace before breaking into a run and drops the camera before running off into the darkness. It landed in a puddle on its side, and that's where it stayed as it filmed the man's feet running away. The point of view shot became disorienting as he ran, swinging from tunnel to tunnel, seeming to reflect his confusion about which one he should run down next. Sometime after that, the footage was found by a different group of cataphiles in one of the deepest areas of the catacombs, before being acquired by a documentarian by the name of Francis Friedland. He later presented the footage on the second episode of the ABC Family Show, Scariest Places on Earth, in the year 2000. Nobody has stepped up after the initial airing of the episode nearly two decades ago, including uh, Friedland himself. Nobody has stepped up after the initial airing of the episode over two decades ago, including Friedland himself. No one knows what happened to the man in the video or who he was to this day. Number five, Barton Mansion, California. Coming up first today on our list of ghost videos that'll change your tune is an old classic and to date one of the best pieces of paranormal footage I've ever seen. I remember watching this one a while ago. It is a bit of an older clip, but it is an absolute classic. Maybe you could use a refresher. Maybe you've never seen it. Two paranormal investigators were filming themselves investigating the Barton Mansion, a famous haunted house just outside of Los Angeles. In 1859, Dr. Benjamin Barton Barton and his family purchased 640 acres of San Bernardino land for a reasonable sum of $500. That's that's probably the scariest part of this story. I literally do pay $1,200 for a basement. Bartman came to turn the property into a successful vineyard and winery, retiring from the practice of medicine entirely. Benjamin would then begin construction on a mansion, building it with clay that came directly from a nearby gravesite. Bad 
bad move. Almost immediately after the construction of the house, Barton's wife collapsed and succumbed to illness. Barton would become a recluse and shut himself inside the manor, with rumors spiraling outwards of Barton becoming engrossed with magic and satanic practices to try and revive his wife. Rumors would be told of loud noises and red lights piercing through the windows of the mansion. These days, nearby residents have reported seeing hooded figures entering and leaving, as well as finding discarded animal bodies near the property, insinuating that absolutely nothing good is happening in there. The Barton Mansion would become far more famous when a pair of paranormal investigators went into the long abandoned mansion to try and un uncover some of the legends. In this clip, as they're exploring on the staircase, they turn and see the apparition of a tall, terrifyingly pale demonic creature. A ghost? Barton's late wife? Barton himself? Not looking to find out, the investigators double time it out of there. The genuine fear from the investigators' voices makes it seem really real. Like I said, to date, one of the best paranormal videos on the internet. But it's only number five, so you could imagine I got four great ones coming up for you. But before we dive right on into that, I'd like to ask if you enjoy the channel, you like what we do here, why not toss us a subscribe, hit that little bell so you don't miss a single scream. We've got scary videos on just about anything you can think of. If you can think it up, odds are good we've done two to three on it. We got videos on everything freaky under the sun and above it. But do that at the end of this video, okay? Because I got four more stories coming up for you right now. Number four, Ghost Girl. Coming up next, another true vintage. I'm like a sommelier for ghost videos. This video uploaded to YouTube titled Ghost Girl. Straight, plain and simple. In it, we get a first person view of a paranormal investigator wandering through a house. The atmosphere is thick and there's a sense of dread in the air. Even without being there yourself, just seeing the video is enough to make your hair stand up. As the camera creeps upward, the investigator slowly moves forward down the hallway, peering through a crack in the door at what looks to be the shape of a young girl sitting in the hallway. That's my least favorite thing for a ghost to be. I don't know why, that's just the scariest one. The ring, yeah, I don't know. The shadows seem humanoid and Maybe it's just your brain filling in the details, but it definitely looks like there's a person in front of whoever's filming. If you listen carefully, it sounds too like you can make out the sounds of weeping or crying, a sad ghost. The video pushes forward for its horrifying conclusion when you see the door open again and you're treated to an up close and personal view of what is unmistakably a small ghost standing up. Definitely Sadako vibes. Now it's a fairly old video, so I was hoping I could dig up a bit of context around it and see if I could get some backstory and get to the bottom of this clip. But clicking through on the channel that it uploaded, all we could really find was a few videos of a, a pretty cute little cat and little else in the way of paranormal content or, or really ever any explanation at all. So was this a real ghost caught on camera and it's never been topped or was this just a hoax to drum up some attention back on the early days of YouTube when things were nice and good? On a side note, does anyone else out there really miss that sort of sweet spot of when YouTube first started out and ghost videos were mostly like this? Some blurry footage of someone walking around a house that you and your dad would talk about whether it was real or a hoax or not for weeks. Maybe I'm just waxing nostalgic entirely lately, but I miss the really blurry low res era of ghost videos. Number three, the fallen angel. Up next on our collection of captivatingly horrifying clips that'll make true believers out of the most determined skeptics is this clip uploaded to YouTube called Fallen Angel of Catalonia. Certainly a bold name and also a pretty good name for like a deathcore band if you're looking for one. Near the village of Camp de Vanol, that's not at all how you say that, Near the village of Camp de Vanel, I think, a group of paranormal investigators are pursuing a lead. Hearing that there was sightings of something bizarre in the nearby area, they go bringing a camera hoping to document the truth of what they find, not knowing the danger they would soon find themselves in. During the video, you can make out what looks to be discarded white feathers floating around in the breeze around where they saw the creature, leading to the belief that it was a fallen angel. Now in the video, the investigators are speaking Spanish, but luckily, Spanish, what with being a language that a lot of people speak, we can translate pretty easily. They're talking sarcastically about how this is such an incredible experience and asking if you see the feathers that are floating all around. The pair of investigators though, they then come across something lurched over lurking in the dark, a pale, sickly looking skeletal creature. Seems like the skin is hanging off of rotten bones with piercingly white, ethereal glowing eyes screeching. Oh, it's the kind of monster that would not look out of place in the hollowed halls of the SCP Foundation. Screeching, it sends the investigators fleeing away. Now, was this a real clip or was this filmed intentionally? I don't wanna burst your bubble too, 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 too much. But if you do a bit of digging on this, 
Uh, you can pretty easily find a making of the Fallen Angels of Catalonia video, and I will say that not a lot of true paranormal experiences have a documentary explaining how they filmed their process. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that one was for fun. Did you have fun? I had fun. Number two, Bionicles. I feel like if you're a certain age, I can say the word Bionicle, and it'll inspire a sense of ferocious passion in your heart. We all love Bionicle, and for good reason. It was probably the coolest toy line maybe ever. I was obsessed with them as a young scrapper, as my parents can probably attest by the 3,000 little pieces that are living in their house somewhere. Biomechanical robots with lore based on Maori culture. Oh, the boys at LEGO were cooking with that. I'm not gonna act like I didn't cry when Takua put on the Mask of Light. I'm a big enough man to admit that. All right, all of this aside, all this waxing poetic about Bionicle, all of those guys are a part somewhere, which might be a good thing, because if this video is any indication, spirits seem to be able to latch onto a Bionicle. Check out this wild footage of a haunted Bionicle moving its head. Look real close, it's pretty subtle. I had to watch it a few times to because I wasn't getting it at first, but when you do, oh, it's gonna make you recoil. I got a little bit of context provided by the original uploader too. First of all, I've never believed in ghosts and I don't consider my home creepy. I know the land doesn't have dark history or anything, but ever since we moved in, we've experienced some strange things. The weirdest thing is one that involves our old toys. One recurring thing we've heard tons of times is the sound of someone digging through Lego pieces upstairs. It's a very distinct noise. We started recording to try and get this noise, and that's when we all noticed that a large Bionicle in the back of the closet turns its head towards us right as we're leaving. So what do you all think, my friends beyond the screen? Is this proof of a poltergeist with a bit of a nostalgic kick looking to save Mata Nui from darkness? Is the Bionicle itself coming to life. I think we need more poltergeists out there who just want to like kick back and play with Lego instead of haunting you. I'm willing to bet more poltergeists are like that than you think. Just want to vibe out, have a little fun. And number one, the basement. Coming up at our final spot today is this video uploaded to YouTube a few years back, which has been making the rounds around the paranormal sides of the internet recently, titled Real Life Paranormal Activity Caught on Camera. I love when the title promises something bold. We get treated to a picturesque first person walking view of a beautiful mid-century modern home, let me just say, being walked around by someone maintaining the property. In the video description, he mentions that he thinks he's caught a squatter living in the home he's working on. And in a way, it seems like he's correct, just not the kind of squatter he was expecting. It's not a corporeal one. As he walks around the house, there's a sense of dread and you know nothing good is coming. But then he opens the basement door, starts calling out who's there, like he's in Luigi's Mansion. No one answers him directly, but as he calls out in fear, we see the lights from down below in the basement start it? to flicker. And this is a round where I would have noped out of there completely. Something, some force of nature from this world or another collides with the man recording the video, causing him to drop his phone and realistically, dash on out of there, fleeing the scene, leaving behind the camera, staring up at the ceiling as we're left wondering. I would super recommend watching this whole one. It's actually genuinely one of the scarier, scarier videos I've seen. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a scary YouTube host. It was actually downright freaky. When the recorder leaves and the camera's just left running, I actually felt like genuinely kind of lonely and scared. Like I was worried something was gonna happen if he didn't come back. I don't get that from most horror movies these days, let alone random ghost videos. So this one gets the Crypt Keeper's recommendation officially, and I watch thousands of ghost videos. So I like to think I'm a bit of a sommelier by now. I already said that in the video. All right. In fifth place, we have a ghost in Arizona. Decided to kick today off with the most recent video on the list, and it just so happens to be the most unexplainable video as well. On Saturday, March 11th of this year, William Church, a professional truck driver who regularly drove on Arizona State Route 87, noticed a bright glare in his dash cam, and he thinks the flashing figure is a ghost. Now, he's described himself as someone who has seen a lot of weird stuff during his travels, but he's been able to make sense or explain away everything except for the specific spotting. The specter was spotted at around 2.30 a.m. while William drove past the highway's 200 mile marker, which is located between Phoenix and Payson, Arizona, and since it was that very ungodly hour, there was no one on the road. He captured something weird on his next car dash cam, which is apparently a leading dash cam brand, and we have the footage. Heads up, it's only six seconds long, so time to pay attention now. And now that we're back from those seconds, I shall continue. He is positive the translucent figure y'all just saw looks like a person just standing in the roadway, explaining that he can see the lines through the legs that make up the figure. 
A little context on the area. Arizona State Route 87 is a north to south highway that was constructed in 1927 and measures approximately 272.66 miles. For those of us that know stuff in kilometers, Good luck with your conversion. The north end travels to State Route 264 near Second Mesa, a census designated place in Arizona, while the south end travels to Interstate 10 near Picasso, an unincorporated community and census designated place in Arizona. Many fatal car accidents have happened on the 96 year old highway, which has reportedly led some locals to believe that the road could be haunted. Ooh, okay. Don't drive there. A recent fatal car crash happened on Arizona State 87 near milepost 201 in early February, and um, the exact cause of the crash is still unknown. The two vehicle collision resulted in the death of one person near Bush Highway, which is east of Fountain Hills, a town in Maricopa County. Valley Chevy dealers in Phoenix named State Route 87 as one of Arizona's most uh, dangerous roads for its beeline-like route There's a lot of looping turns. So viewers who have seen William's video on YouTube claim they've seen a lot of this supernatural activity on Arizona highways and in other public spaces. Speaking of someone who possesses a driver's license and doesn't really drive in the city, um, I'm not necessarily a nervous driver, but I'm a very cautious one who hates major highways. So I'm very glad none of the main roads where I live are cursed. Okay, they're cursed to undergo construction forever or never, but not with death, if they are. Someone better tell me before I get in the driver's seat of a car ever again. So if you know, let me know down in the comments. In fourth place, we have footage from a Vietnamese tornado. I remember when I was younger, I didn't know the difference between like a tornado and a hurricane. And my dad had to explain to me that a tornado is a violently rotating column of air that is in contact with both the surface of the earth and a cloud, while a hurricane is formed over water. They both cause, you know, massive amounts of damage and a torrential downpour, but they're different enough from each other. A tornado is also commonly referred to as a twister, and my brain immediately jumped to The Wizard of Oz, one of my favorite films of all time. Tornadoes come in many many shapes and sizes, and they are often visible in the form of a condensational funnel originating from the base of a cloud, with a cloud of rotating debris and dust beneath it. The footage I have to show you all today shows a tornado, or twister, wreaking havoc over the Bac Ninh province in northern Vietnam. And I'll let your minds be boggled now before I forget. No casualties have been reported, but the whole area looks like a ghost town, with the storm visible from up to four kilometers away. As the driver gradually reverses from the storm, the dashboard camera captures metal sheets flying away, trees falling, buildings collapsing, and the tornado completely flattening the entire area. Kuang Tung, an engineer working near the area, said that the tornado broke many trees and utility poles and blew off many iron sheet roofs. When it was over, the entire residential area was a mess. For reference, most tornadoes have wind speeds less than 180 kilometers per hour and are about 80 meters across and several kilometers deep and travel several kilometers before dissipating. The most extreme tornadoes can attain wind speeds of more than 480 kilometers per hour or more than three kilometers in diameter and stay on the ground for more than 100 kilometers. That's a heck of a lot of quick damage. In third place, we have a plague of locusts. Heads up to anyone that gets squeamish from seeing a lot of bugs, I'd recommend jumping ahead to second place right about now before I show the footage, because this one almost made me lose my lunch. Seriously, I don't do well with bugs. At all. And before someone in the comments jumps in, I don't think this is a sign of the end times just yet, but hey, let me know if there are more signs of those showing up. The incident happened in the Teremovsky district of southwestern Russia's Republic of Dagestan back in 2017. And heck, at the time, the Minister of Food and Agriculture declared a national emergency since 112,000 hectares of land were lost to the insects. For reference, an average swarm of locusts can consume the same amount of food as 10 elephants or 2,500 people, as well as being able to travel distances of up to 130 kilometers in one day. Well, the uh, temptation to hide in my apartment and never leave it again is starting to kick in for me. How about anyone else? The toe curling footage initially looks like a sandstorm, but it soon becomes clear that it is a massive locust invasion and uh, I'll let the footage play so you can scream with me. The thick swarm of bugs halted the driver in Dagestan, Russia on an otherwise, you know, quiet road. An online viewer calling himself Ruslan said, it reminds me of something. The region is either hit by a storm or bugs and maybe someone dug out a mummy and opened its sarcophagus. <sighs> I swear to goodness gracious, if this is because someone ticked off a mummy, I will lecture you to hell and back. I don't know how many times I have to come on the interwebs and say it, but leave the dead alone. Do not disturb. I'm all for peacefully exploring and excavating history, but for the love of humanity, do it carefully and respectfully under the guidance of local experts that can keep the peace. At this rate, I'm gonna have to do a video series on why we should leave sleeping tombs lie. Since apparently it isn't the common sense statement, 
I thought it was. In second place, we have a Russian meteor. Something I didn't know before today is that almost everyone in Russia has dash cams installed in their vehicles because of the sheer amount of accidents and corrupt law and regulations, which is why video compilations from there are so popular. The Shelabinsk meteor was a super ball light that entered Earth's atmosphere over the southern Ural region in Russia on February 15th of 2013. It was caused by an approximately 18 meter diameter, 9,100 ton near Earth asteroid that entered the atmosphere. The light from the meteor was briefly brighter than the sun, visible at as far as 100 kilometers away. It was observed in a wide area of the region and in neighboring republics. Some eyewitnesses also reported feeling intense heat from the fireball. The object exploded in a meteor airburst over Shelabinsk Oblast at a height of about 29.7 kilometers that generated a bright flash, producing a hot cloud of dust and gas and many surviving small fragmentary meteorites. Most of the object's energy was absorbed by the atmosphere, creating a large shock wave. This was 26 to 33 times as much energy that released from the atomic bomb detonated at Hiroshima. Before I continue to prattle on facts and whatnot, here's the video in question. What boggles my mind the most is that no one really reacts. You see people still driving, casually crossing the street, and just going about their day. If I saw that in the sky, you can bet I probably would have crashed a car, or at the very least, stopped outright in traffic. The object approached Earth undetected before its atmospheric entry, in part because its radiant was close to the sun. Its explosion apparently created panic among local residents, and 1,491 people were injured seriously enough to seek medical treatment. Even though we uh, don't see the panic in this footage, around 7,200 buildings in six cities across the region were damaged by the explosion shockwave, and authorities scrambled to help repair the structures in sub-freezing temperatures. With an estimated initial mass of about 12 to 13,000 tons and measuring about 20 meters in diameter, it is the largest known natural object to have entered Earth's atmosphere since the 1908 Tunguska event, which destroyed a wide, remote, forested, and very sparsely populated area of Siberia. This meteor is also the only meteor confirmed to have resulted in many injuries, but thankfully no deaths. But, uh, keepers. And finally, in first place, the 2016 killer clown footage. As someone who is friends with a lot of creepy clowns, heck, I've been one myself, 2016 was a rough year to be a clown. The 2016 clown sighting incidents were reported in the United States, Canada, Australia, and, and subsequently in other countries and territories starting in August of 2016. The sightings were first reported in Green Bay, Wisconsin, in what turned out to be a marketing stunt for a horror film. Go figure. The phenomenon later spread to many other cities in the U.S., and by mid-October, clown sightings and attacks have been reported in nearly all U.S states, 9 out of 13 provinces and territories here in Canada, and 18 other countries. Here, watch the video now before I start fuming over clown rights, and then we can break it down after. The haunting footage shows the masked monster emerging from a motorway underpass and standing in the middle of the road waving creepily at the halted car. When the figure starts walking towards the vehicle, the scared male driver tries to reverse away, but then the crazed clown makes a sudden dash towards the family in the car who are returning home from a pub dinner. After backing up far enough, the panicked driver puts his foot down and speeds towards the clown, who jumps out of the road a split second before being mowed down by the car. In the original Facebook post, the wife of the driver wrote that the incident took place at Grange Mill Lane when they were confronted by this person coming out from the underpath tunnel and charging at them. I'm fuming. As much as I love a good killer clown, such as, you know, my very best friend Buttons the Clown, there's a reason they only exist in controlled, fictional situations. I'm not the type of gal to wish actual harm on people and just, uh, excuse me, I've lost track of words in this state. Number five, mysterious sign. This video, uploaded by Cursed Home on TikTok, doesn't show anything particularly graphic, but within it lies a terrifying mystery. The scene opens on a desolate road by a forest or something. The air hangs heavy as the driver notices a printed sign on the road. Upon further inspection, the sign bears the words, Have you seen him? on it. Beneath the ominous proclamation is a photo of some grotesque amalgamation of horror that defies explanation. The creature's strange elongated limbs, its strange bug-like head with a gaze that pierces through the screen, and the rest of its body shrouded in darkness, alluding to a much larger hole to the part of it that we can see. Under the unsettling image, a cryptic QR code beckons like a digital portal to the unknown. The driver quickly makes his way back to the car and keeps driving on, only to notice the same sign taped to a weathered and rusty metal pole only to keep driving on. So what could this monster be? Well, scanning the QR code leads to an empty web page with no URL, leaving only more questions than answers. And with the video now deleted from TikTok, that just makes me ask, how dangerous could this creepy creature be for any potential information on it to disappear off the face of the earth? Considering that the photo we have of it looks like it was taken from dash cam footage or something, the source of whoever is trying to warn people could be just about anyone. Whatever this cryptid is, it's being hidden, and it's dangerous. 
Hearts. Keep an eye out on the road, guys, because there may be a day you come across horrors beyond your imagination. Should really put these things in those driver manuals. Next, at number four, the Penny Challenge. A seemingly innocuous yet chillingly dangerous challenge that was trending in 2020 and 2021, the Penny Challenge was seemingly innocuous at first, but quickly became something chillingly dangerous after causing several deaths. The challenge's premise is deceptively simple. One must insert a charger halfway into an outlet, bearing its prongs, and then press a penny against the exposed prongs. The result? A massive electric shock that could cause severe electrical damage. But that's not the worst of it. Fires were also known to ignite, and life-altering injuries or death can haunt those who dare to partake. The Penny Challenge's dark saga first echoed across the digital landscape in 2020 like a sinister contagion that preyed on curiosity and vulnerability. Its resurgence in 2021, however, cast an even more ominous pall over the year gripping the online world in renewed trepidation. The horrors of this challenge transcend mere shock, reaching the realm of the grotesque. On December 26, 2021, the challenge's sinister clutches extended beyond the confines of TikTok after an Amazon Alexa inadvertently encouraged a young person to embrace this chilling endeavor. It was at this point that concerns over the challenge came to its peak, as if people burning their houses down wasn't enough to get this stuff removed. Amazon made a swift response and were quick to make a commitment to safeguarding customer trust Trust, making sure the same error wasn't made again. There were also several warnings issued from fire departments and officials around the world, urging TikTok users to avoid partaking in the dangerous challenge at all costs. As there have already been cases of lost limbs, house fires, severe burn damage, and of course, death. Nowadays, videos depicting the penny challenge are removed almost immediately after postage on TikTok, a stark acknowledgement of the grave risks this trend poses. Just another reminder of how crazy we're all going in 2020. We were so bored that people literally just decided to melt pennies using phone chargers and burning down their houses. Wow. At number three, Carly Russell's disappearance. In a perplexing turn of events that has sent shockwaves through the online community, a TikTok video capturing the alleged abduction of 25-year-old Carly Russell has sparked a wave of speculation and unease. The disconcerting details surrounding the footage have led experts to contemplate the sinister possibility of alien involvement. Last month, Russell vanished shortly after alerting 911 to someone she thought was having a medical emergency that she spotted along an Alabama highway. Her sudden reappearance at her parents' doorstep two days later raised eyebrows and fueled conspiracy theories. Amidst the enigmatic circumstances surrounding Russell's disappearance, a prevailing notion has taken root. Aliens. The video depicts Russell being taken away into a car, the last time anyone ever saw her. She claims to have actually escaped capture, only to be then abducted by aliens. Bad luck. In an interview with detectives, Russell described waking up in a sterile room surrounded by large-eyed, gray-skinned, big-headed aliens. She saw herself being operated on, and then the next thing she knows, she's at her parents' front door with no idea how long that she'd been gone. As theories continue to circulate and speculation swells, the narrative surrounding Carly Russell's baffling disappearance has evolved into a surreal tale. The cryptic events that unfolded beg for further scrutiny and exploration, as the curious and concerned alike grapple with the bewildering puzzle that is Carly Russell's disappearance and subsequent return. Coming in at number two, the blackout challenge. Honestly, I don't know if I should be calling this stupid or scary, but the one thing I'm certain of, it's definitely a whole lot of both. Originally surfacing in 2021, but has made several reappearances over the years, the Blackout Challenge, also dubbed the Choking Challenge or the Pass Out Challenge, encourages users to engage in a perilous act, holding their breath until they lose consciousness due to oxygen deprivation. I don't know about you guys, but seeing someone do that is terrifying, so that's why it's so high on this list. And it's mostly young people doing this too. The consequences of this chill act are far from trivial, as it induces a state akin to oxygen depletion during drowning, choking, or cardiac arrest. According to doctors, it only takes a mere few minutes of oxygen deprivation before you can suffer irreversible brain damage or even death. Amid the darkness of this disturbing trend, signs emerged that parents and healthcare providers could watch to identify those attempting the blackout challenge. Red eyes, neck marks, severe headaches, and disorientation after solitary moments were among the alarming red flags listed by the CDC. The lack of awareness among parents prompted an urgent need to raise consciousness about the perilous endeavor, preventing unsuspecting youngsters from falling prey to its dangers. The resurgence of the blackout challenge on TikTok in 2022 was not without grave consequences. Tragedies began to stack up, 
tragically linking the challenge to over 100 deaths during its earlier emergence, according to CDC records. Despite its history, the chilling challenge found a new foothold on the platform, driving even more fatalities and forcing parents and other TikTok users into an uphill battle to protect themselves and their families. As the shadows cast by the blackout challenge deepened, TikTok found itself embroiled in legal turmoil. Lawsuits emerged, echoing the grief and outrage of families who lost loved ones to this horrifying fad. The anguished cries of parents and concerned individuals resonated globally as deaths mounted, leaving a trail of shattered families and devastated communities. As TikTok navigates the labyrinth of litigation and heartache, they are still persisting in an attempt to remove videos of the blackout challenge completely from the platform. However, there still exist a few videos that pop up every now and then. Let's just hope this trend doesn't come back again because the damage it's caused is irreparable. And topping it off at number one, the abandoned housing complex. Uploaded in 2020 by TikTok user Brendan Curran, this video depicts a terrifying look into the dangerous world of ghost hunting and urban exploring. The video begins innocuously enough, with a man venturing into the heart of an abandoned housing complex, its dilapidated walls and broken windows serving as a chilling backdrop to the unfolding mystery. As the camera pans, a sense of desolation permeates the scene, with snow-covered debris and a haunting stillness that belies the complex's forgotten past. However, there seems to be quick flashes of some spray-painted lettering, saying, let me out on it, which can be passed off as a fun horror bit made by the poster of the TikTok to evoke a sense of horror. Just a harmless video of a guy exploring an abandoned environment and making a creepy little video for his fans. However, it was what happened after the video's conclusion that would cast a deeper, darker shadow. In the days that followed the video's upload, an eerie silence descended. Messages and inquiries from concerned viewers flooded the comment section, but there was no response from the man. His once active social media presence dwindled to a haunting void, leaving a growing sense of unease in its wake. Rumors and speculations began to circulate, painting a disturbing picture of his sudden and unexplained disappearance. As weeks turned into months, the digital community's concern evolved into a collective dread. Authorities were alerted and an intensive search was launched to locate the missing explorer. The man's friends and family, consumed by worry and heartache, took to various platforms to plead for any information regarding his whereabouts. Despite the exhaustive efforts of law enforcement, search and rescue teams, and the online community, the man's fate remained elusive. Tragedy struck when news eventually broke that the man had been declared missing and presumed dead. With no clues as to what could have happened to him, some would say he was killed, others would say he's kidnapped, and a few have even gone as far as blaming ghosts for the mysterious disappearance. Some have turned to his last known video and the let me out sign, thinking that a demon or malevolent force inhabited the abandoned complex and was waiting for its next victim. After the declaration of death, TikTok took the video down, thinking that anyone who might come across it may be inspired to find the same location and explore it like he did. But knowing of the fate that he faced, it was justifiably hidden from the app. However, like all videos on this list, there's always another way to find them. The events that unfolded after the man's chilling TikTok not only underscored the dangers inherent in urban exploration, but also highlighted the danger of messing with the unknown. Sometimes a warning is really a warning, no matter the context. The tragic tale stands as a poignant cautionary tale, serving as a lasting testament to the unforeseen risks and heart-rending consequences that can emerge from a seemingly innocuous and thrilling pursuit. Number five, the hospital ward. Coming up first today on our list of high strangeness caught on closed circuit television is this bizarre footage of a ghost caught on camera late at night in a hospital ward. Why don't you watch the footage now, if you dare? I don't mind if you scroll down to the comments if you're too scared. The user posted this clip alongside this little bit of context. A security guard here kept seeing things and wanted someone else to see because he thought he was losing his mind. I would dox myself, but my job allowed me to be at an abandoned hospital for service and the security guard could see things so often he told me to shoot on my camera because I may see something and at first I didn't I thought I did but it wasn't until later when I got off work and I was walking inside I was watching the video and then I realized in it there was a figure and it was the creepiest thing I've seen in my life thus far. The clip made the rounds on the internet because, well, you know, to the original poster's credit, this is the creepiest thing we've seen thus far. It seems like the place is empty, which is already eerie enough. An abandoned hospital ward isn't exactly a comforting place. And then you see the dark silhouette quickly darting through the doorway. 
What is the creature in this clip? Is this just someone sneaking around, a vagrant squatting in an abandoned hospital? Or is this a spirit passing through these hollowed halls? Many on the thread where this was originally posted inferred that this creature could be a shadow person. What's the difference between a shadow person and a ghost beyond ombra and darkness I suppose? I'm not entirely sure myself, but I can tell you this much. It's got me unsettled. And if you know what a shadow person is and you want to clarify that for the casual Crypt Keeper, please throw it down below. I'm only so knowledgeable and I get my knowledge from all over, so help me out a little bit. And if you're looking for way more scary stories, some that I might even know a thing or two about, well, click on through to Top 5 Scary because we've got a whole lot of that. Basically, if you can think it up, if you get scared by it, we've done a video or two on it. Aliens, cryptids, monsters, ghosts, schools, whole everything. So hit subscribe, make sure you hit that little bell as well, and don't miss a single scream. But would you kindly do that at the end of this video? Because I got four more scary CCTV ghosts coming for you right now. Number four, <laughs> the insurance fraud ghost. Coming up next for us is this clip that was posted to the subreddit High Strangeness, which is one of my favorite sources on the internet for, well, high strangeness, for clips that you can't quite explain with anything other than that. And I will point this out too, if you've got a source where you get a lot of scary videos or paranormal stuff, drop that down below as well because I am always looking for new sources to get new content from. Anyway, the user who posted this video had their account deleted. What happened? Did they get too close to the truth? Someone pulled a black sack over their head, tossed them in the back of a van? I have to assume so. The clip in question shows a parking lot late at night and we see a car rolling through and on out and for a brief fleeting moment, we see a flickering shadow figure. Oh, shadow people again looking vaguely humanoid, getting run through by the car. The ghost then dissipates thereafter. Was it struck by the car? Did it get annoyed? Was the ghost trying for a little bit of insurance fraud, the old dive in front of a moving car trick? Do you think a ghost feels anything if it gets run over? I'm not gonna get answers to any of these questions, but what I find interesting and notable about this clip is that the car stops after striking or passing through the shadow person, which is what makes me think this video isn't just a trick of the light or a camera artifact or anything. It seems like something that this was genuinely something the driver saw in front of them. Now, I did try to do some digging, but I wasn't able to find too much backstory on this video, where it came from, who was driving. So we only have this clip to go off of and make our own conclusions. So what do you think? Did this person pass through a ghost? Was this a ghost trying for insurance fraud? Number three. Hotel Ghost. Our next clip coming up is this one. It's one that's made the rounds lots over the internet and the scarier paranormal sides of the internet, which I'm sure all you creeps and listeners are out there hanging out on. You'll be able to see why fairly easily. This clip is baffling and one of the more compelling pieces of paranormal activity caught on camera that I've seen in at least three to four minutes. The clip was submitted by the hotel security manager of the Wingate Hotel in Illinois. According to the manager, guests staying at the hotel were complaining about strange happenings on the second floor. A guest would complain about everything from noise complaints to scratching, changes in temperature, and loud disruptions like banging on the wall, scratching, and loud screaming all coming from room 209. Now there was no history of anything suspicious happening in room 209 until this incident. No long buried story about someone going crazy and killing their family in room 209 or anything. Now here's the footage that was recorded of the security guard that was sent to deal with it. The dispatcher sounds scared, genuinely scared, telling the guard to wait for the police to arrive before entering the dreaded 209. After a brief entrance, the guard returns visibly shaken by what he had seen. He demands they call the police immediately and that while there was no one inside of room 209, all of the furniture had been flipped upside down and stacked, which if you know anything about poltergeist, that's like a classic poltergeist move. That's how they let you know they're there. It's very refreshing, I would say, to see someone in a paranormal clip who reacts to something properly, that is to say, getting the heck out of the building immediately. He doesn't wait around. He's not standing in there to take photos of anything. No, no, no. He sees a bunch of chairs stacked on top of tables, he knows I don't get paid nearly enough to deal with this. Let's call the Ghostbusters. Let's move on out. God bless you, security guard. I hope you're doing well. I hope you didn't get haunted. Number two, Costa Rican monster. Now, I spend a long time looking at weird CCTV footage, door cam, 
blurry cell phone footage, trying to find something weird and freaky to show you all for these videos, and I think I've saved the best two for last here. These ones are really freaky, and I'm excited for you to see them. This footage was captured from a ring light security camera, and it's honestly one of the more downright unsettling things I've seen in a hot minute. Take a little look-see, and I used that joke earlier in the script, I gotta start paying attention more. Take a little look-see, and I don't blame you at all if you need to pause this video and go look at some pictures of something cute, ducks playing in a field or something. We can see a dog barking repeatedly at something outside, and at first I rolled my eyes at this clip because I thought this isn't anything supernatural, this is just two dogs barking at each other. Until I actually started to pay attention to the clip, and I realized what the dog was barking at was absolutely not any dog breed anyone has ever recognized. No, we see something absolutely Absolutely horrifying crawling around like a spider looking like it just came out of dead space or something the way the dog is barking Oh my god, I've heard dogs bark a lot before this dog is freaking out this dog is shrieking this dog is screaming It seems panicked and scared and trying to let everyone in the neighborhood know that something Deeply evil is around and crawling around in a way it shouldn't now this is one of those things where I would like to look at it and rationally I want to say this is just someone messing around, having some fun, maybe had a drink or two here and is letting loose, but I don't know. I'm having trouble playing Scully here. I just fully believe this might actually be a demonic entity that someone caught on camera and I am absolutely glad that it is nowhere near me. This was recorded in Costa Rica, I live in North America, a lot of water and distance between the two of us. Now if you need me, I'm gonna go, I don't know, watch a video of like a cat being funny or something. Can we throw like maybe a, a, a funny cat up at the end there? A little palate cleanser, cute little guy, little ears. And coming up at our number one spot today for horrible spectral encounters caught on camera is this creepy footage from a Manchester office. No, the office experience is not the horror present in this video. The footage is the actual footage security guards were flicking through on the early hours of November 1st. It's a regular office, it's not a bit drab, you know, it's not my style. But the skinnamarink style footage starts to turn from regular boring security detail to full blown horror movie at one key moment. At 3 a.m., things start to get weird. All the computers in the office flicker on at the exact same time, all the chairs start to get thrown around, cabinets opening when they should, and objects rattling as if a massive spiritual disturbance is happening. It's just more than a little bit too perfect that all the supernatural happening happens at 3 a.m. down right on the dot. Now 3 a.m. in paranormal culture is sometimes referred to as the witching hour for the belief that that's the time of day when the veil between our world and the paranormal world is weakest and the spirits are free to cross over to wreak a little havoc in the office. Now I've got to say my mind wants to tell me this one is fake but if this is fake somehow this is a superbly impressive fake with more effort put into it than most horror movies I've seen recently. Whoever was faking this had dedication, time and a good sense of atmosphere and direction. But at the same time, it's just, it, it, it's so perfect, it's suspicious, you know? I have to ask myself if it's real. Would ghosts really be so punctual to arrive at 3 o'clock exactly? Why would a ghost need to get somewhere exactly on time? You've got all the time in the world. If I had all the time of the afterlife, I certainly would not be rushing towards the office. I get enough of that in my regular life. And speaking of, I honestly probably should get back to my desk. Coming in at number five, we've got a real witch. I grew up thinking witches were kind of goofy. There was the Wicked Witch of the West, who commanded flying monkeys much scarier than herself. Then there were the witches at Hogwarts, largely friendly and fun. And of course, there were all the assorted Halloween decorations featuring green women with broomsticks and cats. Not exactly a terrifying lineup. However, as I got a little older, I was introduced to the much darker, more sinister side of these magical people. The witches who reside at the Freiburg Dance Academy definitely paint themselves as scary and evil. And the coven, kidnapping and killing in the woods, and Robert Eggers as the witch definitely made a case for for not trusting magic users. But these also seem like overly violent depictions of these spell practitioners. Many a witch has been hunted over the years, largely on unfounded grounds or because they cast a harmless spell. There are definitely some scary depictions of witches out there, but all in all, I think they've got a bad rap. But witches, like the one in this video, aren't doing much to help with their public image. Check this out. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, apparently a couple of pals were driving around the Def Pavan Ghats in India late one night and ran into something they'll never forget. Their headlights lit up something white and billowy, and upon further inspection revealed an old lady with a cane. She wasn't too keen on being friendly or ignoring the passengers though. The so-called witch relentlessly chased the car through the dark, hobbling towards it at surprising speeds. The folks inside the car were obviously terrified, especially when they couldn't shake her while driving away. Eventually they do make it to a turn off and peel off into the night, but who knows what might have happened if they hadn't made a speedy getaway. Could you imagine if the headlights went out and the engine died? Jeez. Coming in at number four, we've got Meet Sleep. The actual story behind this channel remains a mystery to this day, making the content uploaded all the more fascinating. It's hard to explain just what kind of videos these are, so let's play a clip and see what you can decipher. You are unhappy. Why are you unhappy? What causes unhappiness? You want things to be different? This is one of many similar disturbing videos on the channel. At one point, Meat Sleep had uploaded over 90 videos, but today the selection is considerably pared down. In fact, it's likely that the original channel is totally wiped and the videos available now are just re-uploads. Folks were fascinated by the grimy, crackly, warped quality to the videos and did their best to find out more. The online detectives might have even taken it too far, requesting that Anonymous take a look and doing things like doxing the channel. Many theories have floated around concerning the Meat Sleep videos. Some say that it's a collective of 11 people from across the world doing their best to add to the found footage genre. Others say it's a real serial killer cannibal who is showing off their lair and eating habits. The video clip I played earlier? Depending on who you ask, somebody might tell you it was showing the cooking of human meat. We don't have a whole lot of time to analyze the content of more meat sleep videos, but if you take a look, you might hear that same warbling voice seemingly upset at somebody. You're not happy. I gave you a place to live. Why can't you listen? Feels like stepping into an abusive relationship. Maybe a kidnapper, kidnappy kind of dynamic. There are other videos that seem even less structured and less sensical, so go check them out and see what you can discover. That is, if you're ready. Coming in at number two, we've got real demons caught on tape. If you had footage of real demons, would you share it with the world or would you just lock it away in the vain hope that it might delay the inevitable? What if someone wanted to show you some demons? Would curiosity take hold? Is it better to know true evil or to live in ignorance? Ponder that and watch this clip. Countless arms descend from the ceiling, they sprout from the walls, they ascend from the floor. There is no escape, is there? At the end of this clip, there's a little surprise too, but I won't spoil it though. Of course, this is a VFX test. A very convincing and scary one, but an exercise in fakery nonetheless. So yeah, you were never really meant to see it. It was somebody practicing their craft, maybe in the hopes that a big budget director or producer might catch wind. And if anybody in the audience today matches those descriptions, hit me up. I got some flicks to pitch. But that brings us back to the questions I asked before. What would you do if presented with real demonic footage? Like irrefutably true content. Would you usher in the new age of paranormal videography? Would you warn the general public that the demons are coming? Or would you breathe deep, center your mind, and calmly delete all traces? And finally, at number one, we've got the Robert Heltman tapes. Poor Daisy. Robert Heltman was a ballet dancer who died in the 80s, but that really doesn't have anything to do with the content of this channel. Whoever's running it seems to have kidnapped a woman named Daisy, killed her, and wrapped her in black garbage bags. All this plays out in black and white with plenty of cuts introducing new and creepy elements. Let's take a look at the very first Daisy video. Robert seems to think of Daisy as an esteemed guest and tapes her participating in all sorts of activities. Most of the activities described are a little lacking though, as Daisy is quite obviously dead and unable to move. Sometimes we see a masked man in the background, other times there is reversed audio playing. Is it a real body? 
does the killer place himself in the videos every once in a while to elicit a reaction? It's hard to say. Robert, or whoever's running the channel, seems to genuinely enjoy Daisy's company. No matter how strange the activities get, he has nice things to say about her. But then, on July 12, 2015, he uploaded a video titled Daisy Leaves. We see the body lying near the front door, and then it cuts to a wide open threshold with no Daisy. Robert misses you, Daisy, but I'm not so sure you miss him. Well, those are all up on YouTube right now, so even if you were never meant to see them, you can explore them to your heart's content. Just be careful and be kind to yourself. You don't want to fall too far down a rabbit hole.